in this video we will study about stamens this is the second video of sexual reproduction in flowering plant stamens they are male reproductive organs of the flower in the last video we studied about structure of a flower in that we discussed that stamens are male reproductive organs of the flower now these male reproductive organs help in production of the male gametes now if we see these figures now we can see here this part this part is this whole part these are stamens and here we can see this part this is stamens this whole yellow color we can see a neat white color filament so this is stamen and here also this is filament and this is the anther lobe so these are stamens or male reproductive organs of a flower now if we see the structure of a stamen uh, this has filament and this part is called as anther and this filament helps in attachment to the anther so this is the sterile part only this part is the fertile part and if we see back side of the anther this part is called as connective and this is connecting two lobes also and this also has vascular tissue uh, vascular tissue is xylem and phloem which will help in supplying water and nutrients to various tissues of the anther now if we cut the section of the anther we can see it may have four lobes it may have two lobes now we can see here these are the pollen seeds present in two lobes of these anthers now in the next slide we'll see what is dithicus and what is monothicus anther now here we can see this anther has one lobe then this is another lobe when it has two lobes it is called as dithicus but when it has one lobe this is called as monothicus now dithicus anthers they will have four groups of pollen sacs now each lobe will have this is one lobe this is another lobe each lobe will have two pollen sacs and if we talk about monothicus anther now this will have two pollen sacs so in dithicus anther we have in each lobe we have two pollen sacs so total four pollen sacs but here we have two pollen sacs so this is uh, when it has four this is called as tetrasporangiate there are group of four sporogenous tissue and here this is called as bisporangiate mean it has two groups of sporogenous tissue that we'll discuss in the anatomy of the anther now here we can see in the figure now this is the bithicus anther and this is the monothicus anther this part is monothicus anther like we can see here this single this is the monothicus anther and this these are the stamens of the hibiscus flower and these are stamens of a, a flower which is showing dithicus condition now in the next if we uh, cut the section of the if we cut the section of stamen like this right if we cut it with the help of blade razor or with the help of microtome and if we see internal structure of the anther this will be like this we can see here and this is present like this now this is the outermost layer this is called as epidermis tissue this is the outermost layer now inner to epidermis this is the fibrous layer then these are the middle layer now this is one group of sporogenous tissue this is another group of sporogenous tissue again this is sporogenous tissue this is sporogenous tissue so we have four group of sporogenous tissue and this is called as vascular tissue and this is uh, present in the connective as we discussed vascular tissue will help in conduction of water and nutrients and these are parenchymatous tissues present in between so we can see here uh, like this part this outermost layer is epidermis then this is inner to epidermis is present endothesium now this develops fibers like thickenings so this is called as fibrous layer and this layer is also hygroscopic in nature now this layer is hygroscopic 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 is uh, like when it absorb water, this will swell up. 
and when it lose water this will dry up just like biscuits in the moist region in the moist season or in the humid season they swell up become very soft and when they are dried they will lose water so this nature is called as hygroscopic nature so this endothecium develops fibrous thickening become dead and this is hygroscopic in nature now inner two endothecium are present middle layers so we can have uh, one to five layers called as middle layers and this is made up of parenchymatous tissue uh, parenchymatous tissue is like if we see here this is like this parenchymatous tissue is made up of thin wall tissue right so this is made up of middle layers they are made up of parenchymatous tissue so these are middle layer which are made up of parenchymatous tissue and this is the single layer tapetum which is surrounding the sporogenous tissue tapetum here we can see in this figure this part is tapetum and if we see here this is tapetum and here also this is tapetum and this is present around the sporogenous tissue this inner inner side of the tissue is called as sporogenous tissue so again i'll repeat each anther has now this is the outermost layer i'll show you how to make its diagram now this is the outermost layer this is epidermis inner to epidermis are present fibrous layer which develops thickenings like this then we have middle layers right just i made the diagram then we have four groups of sporogenous tissue if it is dithecus condition like this that's four groups of sporogenous tissue and in each four group of sporogenous tissue we have now this is sporogenous tissue which is diploid in genetic constitution now this is the sporogenous tissue right and this is called as this this which is surrounding it this is called as tapetum so we have outermost layer called as epidermis which is single layer made up of single celled parenchymatous in nature then we have this uh, endothecium layer which is again single layer but this is having fibrous thickenings then we have one to three or one to five middle layers these are middle layers made up of parenchymatous tissue then we have single layer of tapetum which is surrounding the sporogenous tissue if the anther is uh, diathecus then it is called as tetrasprangate it has four groups of sporogenous tissue but if it is monothecus then it will have only two pollen sacs or two group of sporogenous tissue then it is called as monothecus condition i hope this is clear to you now what happens now this sporogenous tissue this will get differentiated to form spore mother cell right so first we have sporogenous tissue right sporogenous tissue then this will get differentiated to form spore mother cell now, now this tissue is diploid now this will undergo meiotic cell division to form the microspores or pollen grains which is actually the male part of the flower now this sporogenous tissue this can divide by various cell divisions and help in formation of the microspores or pollen grains so uh, this formation of the spores how spores they are being produced from sporogenous tissue this process is called as microsporogenesis that is formation of the microspores from the sporogenous tissue but this we will discuss in the uh, next video how spores they are being produced otherwise this video will become very long now we discuss about its we have discussed about outermost layer which is called as epidermis now this is epidermis which is single layer protective in function fibrous layer which is hygroscopic in nature uh, which will swell up when water is available and dry when water is not available this helps in dehiscence of the anther for liberation of the spores again we'll discuss in the an, another video how dehiscence of anther take place and this part this part of the stamen which is very weak this part is weak and this is called as stomium so what is stomium again this will discuss in the next video now this sporogenous tissue as we discussed this will form 
spore mother cell and spore mother cell will form the microspores or the pollen grains like we can see here we can also see here these are the pollen grains so at maturity we will have only two cavities like this if it is diathecus if it is monothecus this will have only one cavity this will have one cavity if it is diathecus this will have one cavity this and this is the second cavity and this is filled with pollen grains and here this has broken up from the stomium region which is the thin part uh, by dehiscence of the anther dehiscence is when it break up to liberate the pollen grain this is called as dehiscence and then uh, we'll discuss in this uh, uh, slide about tapetum now this layer is present around the sporogenous tissue right now tapetum is nutritive in function this help in uh, nourishment of the sporogenous tissue for the development of the pollen grain now this tapetum is of two type glandular or secretory tapetum and amoeboid tapetum now uh, uh, glandular secretory tapetum is like we can see here uh, i'll discuss in the next next slide so this like we discussed this help in nourishment and two lobes they are being produced right now here we will discuss how this tapetum is helping now this is epidermis as we discussed this is endothesium or fibrous layer middle layer and this single layer is tapetum right if tapetum is secrete the secretions right so this become secretory right so this will secrete certain things which will add it to the developing pollen grains now uh, spore mother cell will develop into pollen grain so these secretions will be deposited around this pollen grain so this is when it is secretory in nature right here at this position this will secrete certain secretions so this is secretory in nature but when it is amoeboid in nature what happens now these cells of tapetum they will become amoeba like and they will get fused with each other like this and this become plasmodium right and this plasmodium will be deposited again like we have spore mother cell which will develop into spores and this plasmodium will be deposited around this spore developing pollen grain or spore and this will help in outermost covering formation called as axine of the microspores or the pollen grains so tapetum helps in uh, conversion of sporogenous tissue into microspore mother cell microspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form microspores or pollen grains now when it, it can be amoeboid in nature this can be secretory in nature now secretory is an advanced plants and amoeboid is in primitive families so ultimately this help in nourishment of the sporogenous tissue and formation of the axine so this is the nourishment layer so what are the functions of tapetum this is absorptive this is nutritive this is secretory this help in storage and transport in this help in development of the pollen grains like we discussed uh, this this uh, like we discussed here this is the sporogenous tissue now this is the sporogenous tissue right now this sporogenous tissue will get metamorphosed to form spore mother cell now these are spore mother cell now they will undergo meiosis to form how many spores four spores each microspore mother cell will form four spores and this tapetum help in formation of axine around this pollen grains this also help in nourishment of the developing pollen grain and this help in storage and transport also uh, this is all about what are stamens what is the internal structure of the anther and what is the tapetum and what are the functions of the tapetum thank you for watching my video if you like my video please like share and subscribe in the next video we'll discuss about adhesions of anther and microsporogenesis